was born in Carrickfergus between the mountains and the countries, to the hooting of lost sirens and the clang of trams, thence to smoky Carrick and County Antrim, where the bottleneck harbour collected the mud which jams. That's the first verse of Louis McNeese's poem, Carrickfergus. The strong memory of his childhood in Carrickfergus, evident in this quotation, continued to feature prominently in the poetry of someone who has been widely recognised as one of Britain's and Ireland's leading poets of the last hundred years. Louis McNeese was born on the 12th of September 1907 at Brookhill Avenue in North Belfast. The phrase in the poem, Between the Mountains and the Gantries, is a reference to the backdrop of the Cave Hill on, behind the Brookhill Avenue house and then below it, the Belfast shipyards where only four years after his birth, the ill-fated Titanic would be launched. It was when his father was appointed Church of Ireland Minister of St Nicholas's Parish Church in Carrickfergus in 1908, when Louis was less than one year old, that the town's formative influence on the early years of young Freddie, as he was then known, began to take effect. In 1914, when he was aged only seven, McNeese's mother died in a Dublin hospital. The loss of his mother at such a formative time of his young life left a long-term impact. This is evident, for example, in the wistfulness of his poem, Autobiography. In my childhood, trees were green and there was plenty to be seen. Come back early or never come. My father made the walls resound. He wore his colour the wrong way around. Come back early or never come. My mother wore a yellow dress. Gently, gentle, gentleness. Come back early or never come. When I was five, the blank dreams came. Nothing after was quite the same. Come back early or never come. The dark was talking to the dead. The lamp was dark beside my bed. Come back early or never come. When my silent terror cried, nobody, nobody replied. Come back early or never come. I got up, the chilly sun saw me walk away alone. Come back early or never come. McNeese's early recollections of his formative years in Carrickfergus centre around not only his family, but the entourage that made up the rest of the household. It was Archie, the rectory's gardener, who seems to have kindled as much as anyone the boy's youthful imagination. In his autobiography, McNeese wrote, Archie romanced largely about himself, always in the third person. Archie's the great fella, oh my. Archie's the queer fella for work. You wouldn't find his like, I'm telling you, not in the whole of Ireland. And then McNeese's poem, The Gardener, celebrates Archie. He was not able to read or write. He did the odd jobs on gentlemen's places, cutting the hedge or hoeing the drive with the scowl of a saint, with the pride of a feudal chief, for he was not quite all there. That last line, represented in italics on the printer page, <clears throat> repeats the Ulster idiom often used in describing people generally regarded as being somehow mentally challenged. The town's influence lasted throughout his life. In the poem, Carrick Revisited, written when McNeese returned to Carrickfergus following the death of his father in 1942, McNeese looks back wistfully on his early years in the town. Back to Carrick, the castle as plum assured as 30 years ago, the channel of my dreams determined largely by random chemistry of soil and air, memories and shelf peer at me from the shelf. Foghorn, Millhorn, Corn Craig and Church Bell, half heard through hoarded time as a child in bed. Glimpses of a brangle of talk from the floor below, but cannot catch the words. Our past we know, but not its meaning, whether it meant well. McNeish remained proud of his Irish roots and the fond reminiscences of Ireland that permeate much of his written work are largely centered on more romantic features of its landscape. He recalls that it was on a family holiday in Port Stewart, County Londonderry, coach, that I suddenly met the Atlantic. Walking slightly uphill and round a corner, I ran head on into a surprise, one which is with me still when the open sea catches me unaware. His first encounter with McGilligan Strand, also in Londonderry, left an even more creative impression. He describes his first view as, coach, one of the longest and smoothest strands in Ireland. We suddenly came round a corner and there it was, unbelievably but palpably there. Once again, as with my first sight of the Atlantic, I had the sense of infinite possibility, which implied, I think, a sense of eternity, 
and once again, it met me over a brow and round a corner. And that sense of eternity that he speaks of is evoked for McNeese by the sight of the ocean with its awareness of the great beyond. And this is poignantly evident in his poem, Round the Corner, published following his death and indeed on which he had been working right up to then. Round the corner was always the sea, our childhood tipping the sand from its shoes on return from holiday. Knew there was more where it came from, as there was more seawood to pop and horizon to blink at. Round the corner is, sooner or later, the sea. McNeese died in early September 1963, just a few days short of his <coughs> 56th birthday. His ashes were buried in Corridor Church of Arden Graveyard in County Down. After having been a lecturer in English at Birmingham University, he had become a BBC producer of radio programmes, and indeed it was on fieldwork for one of these programmes that he caught a chill that turned to pneumonia. McNeese's continued links with his family are also poignantly demonstrated as he lay dying in a London hospital. His sister Elizabeth describes her last visit to him as it became clear that he would not recover. She recalls his last hours at his bedside by writing. He was ill about 36 hours before he died. I was holding his hand and really did not think he was conscious, but I said to collect, lighten our darkness, and his fingers lifted and pressed my hand. And then I said the Lord's Prayer, the fingers lifted again, and then he went to sleep, and in the end died quite suddenly. And then she says, don't tell this to anyone. Louis had been an agnostic for many years an enigmatic allusion to an enigmatic literary figure, and yet one whose creativity owed much for his upbringing in the town of Carrickfergus. If any of his poetry summarizes McNeese's predominantly existentialist view of the world, it is the poem, The Sunlight on the Garden. The sunlight on the garden hardens and grows cold. We cannot cage the minute within its nets of gold. When all is told, we cannot beg for pardon. Our freedom as freelances advances towards its end. The earth compels upon it. Sonnets and birds descend, and soon, my friend, we shall have no time for dances. The sky was good or flying, defying the church bells and every evil iron siren and what it tells. The earth compels. We are dying, Egypt dying, and not expecting pardon, hardened in heart anew but glad to have sat under thunder and rain with you and grateful too for sunlight on the garden.